The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. And we would like to now hand over to the co prosecutor to continue putting the key documents before the chamber. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I return to my presentation, let me just give you an update on where we are in terms of um, completing our presentation on the JCE policies uh, and also um, a discussion we had with the civil parties in terms of plans for uh, tomorrow. Um, we had originally indicated we would take two days in total for JCE policies, one day for to present related to the accused in a total of three days. Um, we were I will be probably continuing over um, into the first session tomorrow morning, which means we will try to make that up by only using three quarters of a day for our presentation on noon Chea. Um, but I, by tomorrow, um, uh, I, tomorrow morning, I will in the first session I will finish my presentation uh, no later than the first hour. My colleague, uh, one of my national colleagues, has a half hour on forced marriage, and that will conclude. Means we will conclude our presentation on JC policies in the first session tomorrow morning, so we will use two and a quarter days for that. Uh, I've discussed with the civil parties, and they've agreed that, that if this is agreeable for the court, they will then do their presentation on JCE policies so that the policy issues are presented together. Um, and uh, they can give you an update on how long they will require from that. Uh, when, they are when the civil parties are completed, the presentation on the five JCE policies, um, we will then uh, either begin our presentation on the noon chea, uh, or if the defense teams wish to respond first to the JCE policies, that's uh, an issue for, for the chamber. But I wanted to give you uh, an update on where we are in terms of our completion and what we had discussed with the civil parties in terms of uh, um, uh, the uh, completing the presentations on JC policies. The President. The Chamber has already informed the co prosecutors and other parties of the proceedings. And we did this at the beginning when we commenced uh, this hearing. And that uh, the chamber already indicated that the uh, time would be allocated to the co prosecutors to present both the joint criminal enterprise and at the same time the uh, roles of the accused. And at that, uh, the, at the and also the legal lawyers for the civil party would be allowed to share this uh, time to present the documents before we proceed to hand over to the counsel for the accused to respond or to make any observation or submissions regarding the documents presented by both uh, the Argument the parties sur la présentation uh, next déjà week. Par les and for that, as the president, uh, we feel uh, very worried. Uh, un peu and finally, we also made it clear to the co-prosecutor on this, and perhaps there might be some change in this. That's why the message uh, is là, not properly conveyed. Y a un changement. Peut-être que le message n'a pas été bien compris. Uh, Mr. President, there, there's, uh, we're not asking for any additional time. Um, the co-prosecutors and civil parties will work within the time that's been decided. I simply was uh, advising the trial chamber that our intention was that uh, we, we will both do our presentations on JCE policies and then we will turn, turn to the accused. But we will work within the period of time that was, that was provided by the court. We are not, we are not asking for additional time.
The President, uh, then you may proceed, please. Because uh, um, that is what we expect to see, and perhaps there may be a bit of uh, change or difference in this, but you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a few more documents to present uh, relating to the general enemy Le policy, and then I will turn uh, to the, the policy targeting officials and soldiers of the Khmer Republic. Uh, first, um, going back to the general enemy policy, uh, document E3-156 is an example of the party's enemy policy from sector 105, uh, Mandalkiri region. Uh, it is an April 23, 1978 telegram written by a witness who has testified in these proceedings, Sao Sarun. In paragraph 3 of this report, which was distributed to Uncle, Uncle Nguyen, Uncle Van, and Uncle Born, states as follows, quote, the issue of the situation inside the party. Comrade Sot, chairman of the repair factory, has committed immoral acts with the woman. Now the arrests have been made. Both the man and the woman have been arrested. This comrade was previously implicated in the confession of the traitor Ha Chun. At that time, the sector monitored his activities, but now he has been involved with these immoral acts and has been arrested and detained. Concerning this matter, please help with your opinion at the level at which this must be kept or be sent. An example from the northeast zone is the case of Koklak District Secretary Hu Kao, who, according to the OCP revised S-21 prisoner list, was arrested and entered S-21 on the 5th of March, 1977. And document E3-1058, E3-1058, contains a series of three documents, the first of which is a handwritten note from Sansen to Deutsch dated the 7th of March 1977, two days after the arrest of District Secretary Wu Kao. And that note to Deutsch reads as follows, quote, some people who were outside the military sector, together with some internal cadres, were arrested. Bu Kao, who was sent from the North Zone, has been a cadre since the revolutionary struggling period. Comrade Tin, a reference to the Sector 101 secretary, arrested him and sent him here. Please interrogate him hastily in order to smash his string in Sasan at the right time. End of quote. And attached to the note sent to Deutsch is a two page handwritten report of the same date, March 7, 1977, from Sector 101, which describes confessions in which Bu Kao was implicated as having contact with the UN. A further related document to Bu Kao is E3-1061, a report from Division 801 Secretary Brun to San Sen dated the 24th of March 1977. And in Section 2 of this report, the Division 801 Secretary reports on the enemy situation in Sector 1, describes the interrogation of a district commerce cadre accused of belonging to Bu Kao's network and accuses Bu Kao of committing immoral offenses with several women, including his deputy secretary.
Uh, this report Ocean. contains a handwritten note from Son Sen forwarding, forwarding the document to Concord. Uh, okay. Your Honours, these documents relating to this district secretary from Sector 101 of the Northeast Zone Donc, are presented as relevant to show the close coordination and agreement between the zones, the military, the center, and S-21 in relation to enemies. The chamber um, has seen in these proceedings a number of documents from the north zone, so I will just briefly refer to two the documents from that zone, E3-1077, uh, is a telegram from the North Zone Secretary Say to Committee 870, dated the 10th of April 1978. And the section one of that report refers to the arrest of former sector secretary Hong and all of his henchmen who are accused of supporting the In Tom group. Again, another reference to one of the seven Law No Super Traders. Section three of this report on the internal situation in Sector 103 states, quote, the situation is normal. We are continuing to purge the remaining group continuously, including those who oppose our revolution openly and secretly. And document E3-175, E3-175, is a letter from North Zone Secretary Say to Committee 870 dated 17 April 1978, which reads as follows, quote, I would like to submit the confessions of the following people. One, Sani alias Khan, Commerce Sector 103, in Phnom Penh, and Sai alias Pang, Security Sector 103, to the committee for review and to serve as a document for searching for the string of traitors who burrow from within." End of quote. And the last document from the zones I will present showing the party policy on enemies is E3-1094, E3-1094. It is a, the monthly report to Ankar from the West Zone office, M401, dated 4th of August 1978. And at the very start of this report, Section 1.2 is titled the activities of the hidden enemy growing from within, and reads as follows, quote, Based on an overall examination during this month, the hidden enemy burrowing from within carried out all forms of their activities to stir up and cause conflicts, to attack and oppose, and to smash us continuously and more profoundly. These are caused by a small number of the not good elements who are the henchmen of the enemy or who are implicated by the enemy. Those elements were screened out from various units and military, as well as the elements of the 17 April, including former civil servants and some Chinese and Yuan aliens. Continuing in the next paragraph, quote, we have had plans in place to apply the party's assignment line to routinely remove, screen, and sweep clean them. A detailed report then follows uh, from the West Zone uh, on the party line and the enemies in the sector. And at Khmer 0014, 
3610 English 0031537475 and French 0059353030 in the section of the report for 30, Donc, sector 37, which is titled, quote, about the screening of the UN elements, the CIA agents, and the not good elements, the zone office reported as follows. One, smashed 100 ethnic UNs, including small and big adults and children. Two, smashed 60 persons who had been from the ranking group, as well as the CIA of the American imperialist who were hiding in the units and cooperatives. The final group of documents I will present on the general policy of the party towards enemies before I turn to documents uh, showing the targeting of law and law officials and soldiers are some materials that show the existence of a nationwide JCE to eliminate enemies. Very briefly, uh, E3 slash 2365, E3 slash 2365 is a map that was prepared by DC CAM that shows the security offices and execution sites that were identified throughout the country as part of the DC CAM mapping project. On this map, each yellow circle marks a security office that was identified by DC CAM, and each red square marks a mass grave or killing site that was identified. This map was prepared around 2001, so it does not include all the security offices and execution sites located by DC CAM. To find those, um, President, the prosecution, uh, please hold. The counsel for Kirsten Pond, please proceed. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Je suis restée silencieuse. Cet après-midi, bien qu'il y aurait eu matière à me lever, puisque nous sommes largement sortis de la question simplement de la politique, mais nous avons bien parlé de la mise en place, de la mise en œuvre de ces politiques, mais nous y reviendrons lorsque ce sera notre tour de parler. En revanche, aujourd'hui, nous présentons de l'autre côté de la barre un document qui a été établi par DCCAM qui n'est pas contemporain de la période des faits euh, et nous nous objectons à cette présentation. Nous ne savons pas qui euh, exactement a dit ce calme, dans quelles conditions euh, euh, ces documents ont été élaborés. Je sais bien que ces documents portent un document E3, mais dans le cadre de l'audience de documents clés sur l'entreprise criminelle commune, euh, je dois dire que ce document me paraît bien éloigné de l'objet de la présentation euh, des documents clés en la matière et à ce titre, euh, ce n'est pas pertinent dans le cadre euh, de, euh, du, du procès 002 bar 1 et j'objecte à ce que ça soit présenté euh, dans le cadre, encore une fois, de l'entreprise criminelle commune relatif au déplacement de population et euh, aux euh, exécutions de soldats. Monsieur le Président, si je peux répondre. Monsieur le Président, si je peux répondre. Le fait que il y avait des centaines de centaines de sécurité officiers identifiés throughout the entire country is certainly relevant evidence to prove the existence of a joint criminal enterprise throughout the country involving all organizations relating to enemies. This is a map. The other two documents I'm, I will present are simply lists of the security offices and mass graves that were identified by DC CAM. In terms of the basis for, for this, um, Council uh, can look at uh, the records that we submitted, Et there are detailed DC CAM mapping reports that were prepared each time they identified a security office or mass grave site where all the details are provided, details that I will not be presenting today, 
but that evidence is there. It's part of the case file. But in terms of what we are doing today, the simple fact that there were hundreds of security offices around the country is relevant to prove the existence of the JCE, and that is the sole purpose that it is being presented today. President, the objection and its ground made by Kids and Ponds Defense is overruled. The document has already been placed in the case file. And of course, the Chamber will make the assessment on the weight of the evidence when we prepare the judgment. The prosecution you may continue. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just to finish, uh, I will simply note for the record uh, two documents uh, from which the court can get a the most recent or a more up-to-date list uh, from DC CAM's mapping project, E3-2764, E3 slash 2764 is a DC CAM document titled DK Prisons that was updated through February 2008. It lists 196 security offices from the DK period that were identified throughout the country by the DC CAM mapping project. And document E3 slash 2763, E3 slash 2763 is DC CAM's list of 390 mass grave or burial sites that were identified throughout the country in its mapping project. With that, uh, that completes my first part of my presentation on enemy policy. Let me now turn to the documents that answer a question uh, that Noon Che's counsel has asked a number of times, which is where, where are the documents that show the policy targeting law and law officials and soldiers? And I will start, and bear with me, with a few more of the revolutionary youth and revolutionary flag publications that discuss the party policy and which classes of people were considered to be enemies. The first document is E3-146, E3-146. It is uh, the August to September 1974 issue of Revolutionary Youth and in this document at Khmer 0028-3409, English 
8746 French 00611810 uh, At this page uh, the party publication indicates as follows the feudalist class is divided up into two types feudalist aristocrat and feudalist landowner quote feudalist aristocrat refers to the ruling feudalist group who oppress the people these include king and high rank officials such as minister provincial governor and district governor down to the commune chief and chum clerk the same issue a few pages later defines the second capitalist class as including quote students and civil servants who mainly use their intelligence for living, a group that is referred to as the intellectual second capitalist class. The next document is E3-10, E3-10, and it is the uh, September to October 1976 issue of Revolutionary Flag. And the section that I will uh, present from is a, a, dis a discussion of class contradictions inside Campuchian society, which can be found at Khmer 0006309. Through nine four, English zero zero four five zero five two nine through three zero, and French zero zero four nine one eight nine five through nine six. This part of the uh, revolutionary flag reads as follows: quote, Fundamentally. The contradictions are between the proletarian class and the capitalist class. Aside from this, there are class contradictions with the feudalist, landowner, and privileged classes, also translated as aristocrats or mandarin, namely sub-district chiefs, district governors, provincial governors, government officials, police, and soldiers. Continuing in the next paragraph, there are contradictions within the old peasants from upper middle peasants on up, particularly with the wealthy peasants that are life and death contradictions. There are also contradictions with the new peasants within the new peasants contradictions with capitalists and feudalists that are life and death contradictions. When individuals reform, they are not life and death contradictions, but they do not easily reform. The contradictions are buried because the forces of the proletarian dictatorship are stronger and they cannot move. Some elements may reform, but many elements do not reform. When they die, they instruct their children to struggle on against the communists. Continuing one paragraph later, quote, in the base areas, as for the characteristics of the contradictions that we can detect, most of them are government officials, policemen, soldiers, and students. This comes from the capitalists and the landowners not showing themselves. They are the instigators, but they do not show their faces. When they held power, they did not show their faces. They just paid government agents to show their faces. 
à le faire pour eux. Aside from antagonistic contradictions with the capitalist landowner class, there are also internal contradictions that arise from low-level and high-level political awareness. We must resolve that through education. In summary, inside the current society, there are one, secondary internal contradictions, and two, antagonistic life and death contradictions between the workers and peasants on one side and the capitalists and feudalists on the other side. Uh, Your Honors, this same uh, party line uh, is also repeated in document E3-138, E3-138, which is a party circular titled Sharpen the Ideology of the Proletarian Class Until It Becomes Very Sharp and Strong. I will not repeat it because it uses the same party lines and same language as the document the revolutionary flag I just read. Que dans l'étendard révolutionnaire. Turning now to some documents showing statements from the party, statements from party leaders, and events relating to law and order officials and soldiers in the period um, leading up to and following 17 April 1975. The first I would like to present is E3 slash 707, E3 slash 707. It is the April 1978 interview of Ing by Dan Burstein, who was the editor of a U.S. communist paper titled The Call. And at Khmer S00728134, English S00049349 French S00742527 Ingsuri discusses the period after the Second Party Congress in 1963 as follows, The Deputy Prime Minister, referring to Ying Suri, went on to describe the different forces within the Kampuchea ruling class of that time, indicating three broad groupings. On the far right, there were those like Lon Nol, who were completely reactionary and nothing but lackeys of foreign imperialism. In the center stood Sihanouk, the head of state, and some others like him, who, while opposing communism, also supported a policy of genuine political independence for the country. On the left were progressive people like Q. Sampan, today's president of the state presidium, who at that time was a well-known intellectual and politician. His stand against foreign imperialists was so for, firm that he was forced to flee Phnom Penh under intense pressure by the right wing. The document then continues with a specific quote attributed to Ng Suri. Quote, we mobilized both the middle and left sections of the ruling class, said Suri, and built a united front with them against foreign domination. We isolated the real traders like Lon Nol, end of quote. E3 slash 783 is an issue of revolutionary flag from Sept September and October 1972. And the reference, the short reference I will present from this document is at Khmer 00442285, English 
and French 00721041. And at this part of the revolutionary flag, the party refers page, to Lon Nol, Sirik Matak, and Son Noctan as Noctan traitors aligned with traitres, imperialist America, sur, whom the party must absolutely crush. Que le parti the next document, which document your honors suivant, have heard a number of times, but I will simply quickly reference Je vais le citer is E3 slash 117. This is, of course, a key document relating bien sûr to the targeting of Law Knoll officials as it is the 26 February 1975 press communique signed by Kusin Pan as chairman of the Second Funk and Grunk National Congress. And you have heard paragraph one the, how the National Congress identified the seven super traders, Lan Nol, Sirik Matak, Son Nok Tan, Chen Heng, In Tom, Long Beret, and Soten Fernandez, and declared, quote, it was absolutely necessary to kill these seven traders. Related to this document is E3 slash 189, E3 slash 189, which is a copy of the statement from the Second National Congress on the seven super traders, which was sent to the United Nations by Grunk Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sarin Chak, and presented to the United Nations by the permanent representative of the People's Republic of China. And another related document is E3 slash 3334. That's E3 slash 3334. This is a uh, report from the U.S. Embassy, one of their weekly reports called the Khmer Report dated the 4th of March, 1975. Paragraph 15 of this report reports on the broadcast of the Funk statement calling for the execution of the seven Law Nol traders. The next document is E3 slash 120. E3 slash 120. This was a statement of Q Sampan that was broadcast by the Voice of Funk Radio on the 15th of March, 1975. And it, it can be found at Khmer 00-70-02-36-37, English 00-16-68-67, Six eight two eight and French zero zero seven zero zero two zero two six through two seven. And in this uh, broadcast, Kusampan again identifies by name the seven law knoll leaders who form the quote unquote traitorous clique. And he appeals to people to intensify their struggle against the law known traitors, stating as follows, quote, You are asked to increase your struggle activities, attack the traitorous clique more forcibly and more accurately, continuing later, raid, rice depots, and gasoline Attaquer storage depots. De Attack les the enemy's supply depots, military police stations, Attaquer and prisons, seizing our monks and brothers who are being detained, and even riot against them, seizing weapons to attack them, and join our armed forces to put an end to the traitors 
existence. End of quote. Soulevant, en saisissant des armes pour les attaquer et pour rejoindre Within nos forces armées. Within document E3 slash 118, E3 slash 118 is another uh, radio broadcast of a statement by Q Sampan by the Voice of Funk Radio. This one on the 13th of April, 1975. It can be found at Khmer 00 70 English 00 French 00 and in this radio broadcast, émission, Q Sampan made the following statement regarding the newly formed Law Knoll Government Leadership Committee. Du... Quote, quote, this so-called Supreme Committee Comité is another traitorous organization designed to ce, obstinately ce begin another round un of barbarism. The Supreme Committee does not represent anyone but a few traitors. The creation of this organization is an anti-national and anti-popular act designed to continue the treachery of the last bunch of traitors. For this reason, all brother countrymen in Phnom Penh and the few provincial capitals still under enemy, temporary enemy control should unite their strength and overturn this traitorous organization. Also in E3 slash 118, this one, this uh, at this reference at Khmer 00905195 through 96, English 00166974, French translation is still pending on this. This is a radio broadcast by the National Liberation Armed Forces that took place uh, at 0559 Greenwich Mean Leur Time, meaning 12 or 1 p.m. in Phnom Penh universel, on the 17th of April, 1975. The broadcast uh, reads as follows, quote, I hereby inform the contemptible, traitorous, law null clique and all its commanders that we are not coming here for negotiations. We are entering the capital through force of arms of the CPNLAF. The CPNLAF troops from the northern and eastern regions have occupied the radio studios at the Ministry of Information at 0900 today, continuing in the next paragraph. Quote, As for the remaining members of the traitorous Lono clique, we do not need to negotiate with them. They must all lay down weapons and surrender to the Committee of the Funk Forces from the North and East Regions." End of quote. Next document is E3-2694, E3-2694, this is telegram number 595 from French Consul Jean Dirac to Paris titled Political Asylum and dated the 18th of April, 1975. It reads as follows, quote, following ultimatum from city committee, I am compelled, in order to ensure the security of our compatriots, 
to include in the list of persons present at the embassy, one, Prince Sariq Matak and two of his officers, two, Princess Mom Manavong of Lao origin, third wife of Prince Sihanouk, her daughter, her son-in-law, and her grandchildren. Three, Mr. Ung Bun Or, Or, President of National Assembly. Number four, Mr. Lung Nal, Minister for Health. Barring express and immediate order from the de department requesting me to grant political asylum, I will be compelled to turn these names in within 24 hours. The next document is E3-2700, E3-2700, and it is telegram number 605 from French Consul Jean Durac, titled Departure of Refugees, and dated the 20th of April 1975, with a note on it indicating that it was received uh, at 11.55. The telegram states as follows, quote, Following my intervention, this morning the city committee authorized the Cambodian nationals who had taken refuge in our embassy to leave it freely, with the exception of figures from the former regime who will join another group, end of quote. And another telegram later that same day from Jean Durac, E3, slash 2702, E3, slash 2702, is telegram number 608. Telegram and in this telegram, Mr. Dirac writes as follows, Monsieur quote, Dirac I refer suit. to my telegram Je number 595, that was the document that I presented just a minute ago, E3-2694 on political asylum. Referring to my telegram number 595, Prince Sirik and the people named in my reference telegram reported this afternoon in a very dignified manner to an unidentified committee, Funk or NLA, which came to collect them in a jeep before the embassy gates. A hundred or so other Cambodian nationals intend to give themselves up as prisoners tomorrow morning." End of quote. Document D365-1.1.1 D365-1.1.39 This is a Washington Post article dated the 1st of November 1975 titled Cambodia Executions Confirmed which includes the following statement. Quote, Ng Suri, Deputy Premier in Charge of Foreign Affairs, said Long Bure, the former Prime Minister, Lon Non, brother of former President Lon Nol, and Sariq Matak, a powerful figure in the government, had been executed, but he gave no details. End of quote. And E3-604, E3-604 is a Bangkok Post article from uh, the following day, 2nd of November 1975, titled Executions Admitted, which states, quote, Deputy Cambodian Prime Minister Ng Suri 
confirmed yesterday that two top leaders of the former Phnom Penh regime had been executed by the People's Council after the Khmer Rouge victory. The confirmation by Ng Sri that both former Premier Long Bure and Lon Non, the younger brother of former President Lon Nol, had been executed, came after several unconfirmed reports earlier filtering out of the country. The next document is a document uh, from the military in the period after April 1975. It is E3-832, E3-832. This document is an order or decision dated 4th of June 1975 from Division 703 Commander Pin, and it names 17 former Law Nol soldiers, mostly lieutenants or lieutenant colonels, as traitors and states at the bottom of the document, quote, all these 17 persons have been examined by the party and the party has decided that they are to be smashed. The comrades are asked to implement this policy of the party, end of quote. With several of the Lon Null soldiers on this list, for example, numbers 2, 11, and 17 on the list. The document indicates that all members of their family are also traitors. And the comments regarding the 14th person on the list, First Lieutenant Um Tsai, reads as follows, quote, he is a former teacher who was a traitor when he was a teacher. In his biography, he criticizes us very strongly. His responses show absolute support for the Republic regime and opposition to the revolution. Mr. President, the next document I will simply refer to very quickly uh, is E3-276, E3-276, this is a uh, report from AFP from Bangkok dated the 21st of May 1976 titled AFP Lists Generals Reportedly Executed. The report states, quote, the Khmer Rouge captured 54 Cambodian generals when they seized Phnom Penh in April 1975 and reportedly executed them, often with their families, the Cambodian resistance movement claimed here today. A resistance spokes spokesman today handed AFP the list of the generals which was drawn up last December and which has already been sent to several Western governments. The list of generals was, and the, the report concludes by listing the names of over 50 law null generals, which I will not read now. While I will not read these names, the chamber will call it is heard from the surviving relative of one of the persons on that list, Touch Sari. The next group of documents that I will turn to, which evidence the party's policy targeting officials or soldiers from the Law Null regime are two biographies that were prepared by cadres from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The first is E3-3569. E3-3569. 
And this is the biography of Kor Von Heng, alias Kon, a cadre from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs required to provide a biography which explains past contacts with, with persons connected to the Law and Order regime. For example, in section one of his biography, which is at Khmer 00003745 through 46, English 00743406, French 00743081 through 82. Khan discloses in his biography that his third elder sister was, quote, married to a soldier named Tom Rett, ranked chief corporal in the Royal Army. He belonged to a special class serving as a tool Il of the ruling class. Khan, the author of the biography, Kohn, then goes on to explain, quote, since 1970, I have not communicated with my parents and siblings by any means, even by letters, because after joining the front, I realized that they were not revolutionary supporters, end quote. And in section three, paragraph four of his biography, which you can see at Khmer 00003750, English 00743411, and French 00743086. Khan is also required to explain a brief contact he had during a camping trip while he was a student in France in the 1960s. This part of his biography states, quote, around 1969, Long Kang, who was Ah Mon Nol's nephew, also joined the camping vacation organized by the middle group. It was only after the coup that I realized Ah Long Kang was traitorous Mon Nol's nephew. The second biography which I will just briefly refer to, is E3-128. It is the DK biography of Long Narin, alias Rit. And as we have heard, uh, Long Narin was a cadre from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who was directed by his superior, Ing Suri, to write a biography in which he explained his past contacts with former Law Knoll Undersecretary Tach Chia. And in this biography, we see that explanation in the first section of the biography, where Long Narin describes his contact with Tach Chia during the time they went to the same pedagogical school and consistently refers to his former schoolmate as the contemptible Tach Chia. The next document is E3-1539. E3-1539. This is a S-21 prisoner list titled Names of Prisoners Who Died at Office S-21 Corps. And this list identifies 162 former Law No officials, soldiers, and relatives who died at S-21 in one month, March 1976. 153 of these people were executed or smashed 
de ces gens ont été exécutés et les neuf autres sont morts de maladie. La dernière entrée sur cette liste S21, liste numéro 159, record l'exécution le 30 mars 1976 des quatre enfants de Tach Chia. Chia, the former official from the Ministry of Education, who Long Norin had to address in his biography. Also on this S21 execution list are at least 13 relatives of one of the seven super traders, Long Beret, numbers 44 through 50, 135 through 136, 149 and 153 through 155 are all identified expressly as relatives or family members of Long Beret. Mr. President, I'm going to turn to another document if this is a convenient Monsieur, time document, to stop. Mr. President, le thank you, Mr. Merci, Monsieur le Procureur. The hearing today is come through a, an adjournment. We will adjourn Cette now and we will resume tomorrow terme. morning. Les that is a Wednesday. Commencing from 9 a.m. and tomorrow we will continue to hear the presentation of key documents by the parties. This information is for all the parties, the support staff, and the general public. Security guards are invited to take the two accused, Mr. G and Mr. Sampon, to the detention facility and have them return to the courtroom tomorrow morning before 9 a.m. As for noon, Chia take him to the holding cell downstairs to be equipped with the audio-visual means for him to remotely follow the proceedings. The court is now adjourned. Audience is now adjourned.